Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. As a musician, I pretty much learned how to build my audience from scratch. And so I decided to help other musicians do the same because I saw a lot of people I work with struggling with that. Uh, And so I built a membership called the Female Musician Academy, which helps musicians find their 1000 true fans, learn how to release their music, and just generally learn how to market themselves in a way that feels good for them. And they're able to learn how to turn fans into supporters of their music. Uh, I also have a course called the uh, A Rock Your Next Release program, which is about releasing your album or EP. And I've done things like uh, summits and stuff like that. So I've done all kinds of different things in the music space, Uh, but I'm super excited to be talking about launching offers because as I just mentioned, like I've offered, uh, I have uh, put out many different offers over the years and um, I've absolutely loved working with students in that way. And I know that, you know, any of you guys have the, the knowledge, the experience to be able to do that. You may just not know the right way to to do it, what kind of offer is best for you and how to get started. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Yes. And if you're listening now and you tuned in and you're like, I don't know if this episode is for me. This is for you if you are a music coach already, a music teacher already, or a musician who is thinking about adding additional streams of income and starting to coach or teach. And if you are any one of those things, what I like to call multifaceted music entrepreneurs, or some people say musicpreneurs. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But basically, this is going to teach you how to increase your offer suite and streams of income and figure out exactly what offer you should add to your business based on where you're at, what your interests are, how big your audience is, you know, if you are brand new to this versus if you already have an established business that you're looking to grow, this is for you. Yeah. And again, if, if you're like, I don't know if this is for me, like if you feel like your income streams have been a little unstable lately, and I would say who hasn't, um, adding another stream of income that we're going to be talking about today is going to help you so much to be able to feel like, oh, I've got something, I've got several things here that I'm doing to rely on. So if one of them is not going as well, the other ones are going to keep you stabilized and feeling really strong in your business instead of feeling like you're just like moving with the tide of whatever is going on in the world. Yeah, that's such a good point because I feel like in 2020, the big word that everyone was saying was pivot, 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 Yeah, right? It's like, you have to pivot what you're doing. You have to figure out like what you, (laughs) what's the best way to make money right now. And I, we're going to talk about memberships in a second, but what's interesting is I feel like everyone was pushing memberships last year because it was like, it's lower cost. It's easy, accessible. That's what people want. And now we're sort of out of the initial shock and the initial need for change in our businesses and also just in our lives. And so what do we do with that? Like, I feel like while there's still definitely the movement to online, which is what we're going to talk about online offers primarily, there are still a lot of different ways that you can navigate this. And, you know, you don't have to be reactive. You can be proactive to figure out which offer actually makes sense for you and your audience and plan out a launch for that so that it, it's successful and you're not feeling like you're still in that place where you're like, I'm just trying to like readjust things and get back to some sense of normal after everything that happened last year. 
Yeah, I think that's really good to analyze what works best for you, your interests, your personality, where you're at in business, your goals, all of that. Because I know that, like she said, if people are pushing memberships, it might not be the right thing for you. Yeah. I know for me, Wasn't like for when, me. I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> when I first started, like it, it uh, you know, I had a membership and I was like, oh, everybody has courses. I should have a course. And at first I did a course and I was like, no, this isn't for me. Membership is for me, you know, and I had to kind of like just play around with different things and figure out which fits, which thing fits me best. And right. that's, what's so great about this quiz that we developed is it helps you get a head start on that to kind of analyze the different aspects of where, where you like to, to work, how you like to communicate with students, how, you know, what kind of audience you have and all that. Yeah. And so then you don't have to spend all this extra time trying things and going, ah, that wasn't for me. I just wasted <laughs> three months, six months of my life putting this thing together and it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. And Bri and I are laughing because it's, it's, a pure example of this right between the two of us. Like she has a thriving membership. I started a membership last year because I thought it would be a good offer at the time. And I ended up, uh, I don't know what the right word is, dissolving Sunsetting it. Sunsetting it. <laughs> Sunsetting yeah. sounds so much better. <laughs> Wait, say it again. Sunsetting. Oh yeah, that's a good word. That's a good <laughs> word. So sunsetting it. Um, at the end of 2020 because it just wasn't worth my time or my energy or what I really wanted to do. Or at the end of the day, it wasn't what my clients were desiring. Like I found I was actually better able to sell higher ticket programs, like selling a mastermind program, which was nearly 10 times the price of my membership was so much easier than trying to sell my membership. So that was just my experience. And obviously Breeze had a different one. And that's what's gonna make our conversation even more interesting today because there really is no one perfect answer for every single person. It's up to your individual circumstance. Yeah, and it's it's also like where you're at in your business. For me, a membership was really, really awesome for several, several years. Um, and I had tried a course and it wasn't the thing for me, but then later down the road, like five years into my membership, I had really developed a, a framework that I wanted to teach to people in a very specific way. And I'm like, okay, now it's time for me to have a course. My first course was like way too all over the place. And all of that information really belonged in a membership. And so I then launched my course like five years in, and now my course is doing amazing and I'm loving it because I understood more about, you know, the way I like to run things. And I also, as we'll get into, had really developed a specific framework that I wanted to teach and give people a specific result. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So before we dive in, if you guys want to go to get the answer to your quiz so that you can follow along even more closely with this episode, you can head to katiezacardi.com slash quiz or profitablemusician.com slash quiz. And both of those will take you to the quiz so you can see which offer is the best fit for you right off the bat. And we're gonna talk about each option today, right now. Awesome, yes, go over there, even like push pause, go do that. And then when you come back, what we're talking about, will it make even more sense to you? Yes, exactly. So we're gonna deep dive on each different offer today. So since we've been talking about uh, membership, why don't we start with the membership? Who, what kind of, what is a membership, first of all? <laughs> and who is this best for? And like, what are the benefits for it? Bree, you are an expert on membership. So tell us about it. Okay, so a membership is basically a way to bring a lot of people together. They may be like at different stages of um, their journey, right? Like for me, it's the music career journey, right? that I'm helping people with. And the people that come into my membership are all different stages. I've got people at what I call the foundation stage. Some people are like all the way at the profession stage, but they wanna just learn more or have a community that keeps them accountable. Um, so it's great because you can serve people at all different levels. And you can also talk about a lot of different things. What I love to do in my membership, because I love to, I just love to teach people things that I am learning. So, you know, I've done like all kinds of different uh, like mini courses or like mini trainings within my membership of things that 
have come up in my own business. And I'm like, wow, you know, these musicians need to know this. So, you know, I've done deep dive trainings on Instagram, deep dive trainings on money mindset, deep dive on, um, you know, how to get session work online, like totally different subjects, right? But they all relate to the common goals that my musicians have is that, you know, they want to build their career and find momentum, figure out what they really love to do in music and how they can make streams of income. So that's how a membership kind of brings all kinds of different people together. They're at different levels, but yet they have like a common goal and it allows them to also kind of collaborate and mentor each other which is really fun because there's people in my membership that have been around since the beginning. So almost six years now that my membership has been around and people have been in there since the beginning and they are still around and they're mentoring all the new people and encouraging them. And, you know, they're a little further down the road. So they're able to like inspire those people. Um, but there's plenty of people at all the different levels. So nobody feels like they're alone and you know, that all these people are ahead of them. Or anything. So that's really great. You also in a membership want to facilitate that community by like bringing people together in different ways. So we have always had live calls for the past two years. We've had live calls every week. So they're run by me and my team um, and everybody comes together on zoom and you know, we've got uh, different themes that we're talking about and people can ask all the questions that they need. And it's such a great support system. We've had some people, you know, that have been like really down about what they're doing. I've even, you know, I've seen people cry on the calls and, you know, it's just a very safe space to support each other because a lot of people, especially in the music space, don't have a lot of that like local support. They don't know anyone that's doing what they're doing. They don't have a lot of support from family and friends. And so they can uh, come to this place where everyone is like them. They have the same common goals and they can receive that support as well. And it, it just allows me as a facilitator to bring people together. My favorite thing is like, someone says to me, I'm looking for an accountability partner. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I know the perfect one for you. You know, talk to this person and bringing people together. I've seen collaborations of musicians writing songs together. I've seen them um, do live shows together, like all kinds of really cool things. And I know for me, I get a lot of satisfaction out of making those connections and just facilitating community and collaboration. So that is basically what a membership is like. It's also um, practically, it is a lower cost offer, as Katie said earlier, where people can pay monthly and the price is you know, not extremely high, but they continue to pay monthly. So my membership, they join for a year, they pay $59 a month, or they can pay for the whole year at once and get two months free. And having them in there for a long period of time allows them to see the growth that they want to within the membership and allows us to connect with them and be able to encourage them over time but it also offers like a low barrier to entry if people are first starting out in what they're right. doing and they just can't afford to pay a higher price that's how a membership allows people to get in and then like get that transformation over time so then they can bring in the income that they need in order to pay higher prices for other yeah. things yeah so. and i think the way we'll talk about each offer is basically in almost price order like a membership mm -hmm monthly at least is probably going to be the lowest investment that someone will make now of course in a membership sometimes they can be comparable but with a membership you're most likely looking at charging anywhere from i mean if you consider patreon in this like five dollars a month right <laughs> although most memberships are probably at least twenty dollars a month to up to i mean i've seen business memberships for almost three hundred dollars a month yeah i have too so, yeah and you know that is potentially significant although sometimes those memberships are uh the reason i say potentially is because sometimes they are like more like group coaching or something like that where you do get a, a ton of resources or you get um sort of like a hybrid experience where you have t high, higher touch points with a coach but even still 
you're looking in that range. Like most memberships are not going to go beyond that range. And especially when you're, you are in the lower end, below 50, below 25 or around that number, it can be ap approachable for people, but even below a hundred or breeze, like 590 for a whole year of being in a membership, like that definitely makes it more approachable for someone than working one-on-one -on -one with a coach and they still get a really amazing experience out of it. So that being said, Brie, what are the barriers to entry from a coach's perspective um, or even a musician's perspective who might be looking to do a Patreon? And we're not specifically talking about Patreon today, but since it is a membership, I'll bring it up. Because you do want to have some things in place and you do want to have an audience in order to be able to actually pull this off, most likely to make it worth your time. So tell us about that. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because I was like, oh, I forgot to talk about audience. That is a big <laughs> thing for a membership because, because the price is low, that means you as the coach or mentor is, you're not getting as much from each student. So you have to know that you're going to be able to have enough people in your membership to start off in order to make it worth your time. And so for me, when I started mine, I had already built an audience. I was running Women of Substance. I had a list of several thousand artists. Yeah. Uh, and so that was an okay choice for me because I had a feeling that I had built up trust uh, with the people on my list where they would be like, I'm, you know, I'm willing to try this. And I mean, my membership actually was completely empty when I started it. I, I started it with nothing inside and it was really all about trust. They're like, you know, yeah. we're going to go on this journey with you. Right. Um, and you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to, but because I had a good audience, I got 18 people to say yes up front and pay for an entire year. Wow. <laughs> and that that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my price that. back then was like, I think it was two ninety seven. So but I, that allowed me to give, it gave me the investment jumpstart so I could invest the time to create the content inside the membership. And so you really do need to have enough of an audience and have a sense that they trust you enough and that they'd want to come hang out with you in a membership and learn from you before you launch one. Because if you launch yep. a membership and you get like three members, it's going to be frustrating. And it's the same thing with Patreon. You know, I tell artists don't launch a Patreon if you don't know for sure that you've got a certain number of people that want to join, because then you're beholden to create these resources. Yep. And if you're creating them for three people, you're just going to be frustrated and annoyed that you have to create these resources for three people and you're only making $150 a month or something. Especially with Patreon when people will, will do like the $5 tier. Uh -huh. Like, oh, I've got five people at $5, but do I really want to show up for that? Like it can b make it more stressful on you than actually beneficial. And that was kind of the experience I had in mind. Like I always had a decent steady number. And when I was running my membership, it allowed me to put on trainings for like all of my clients, membership, one-on-ones, et cetera. So like I could bring everyone together for that, uh, even if they were in a higher tier program than the membership. But even still having to promote the membership and feeling like, you know what, I'm actually not seeing that my audience is big enough and that the interest is there for this type of offer to to really warrant keep it continuing to run it. Like it wasn't worth launching it. It wasn't worth trying to promote it. It wasn't worth actually running the trainings and booking guests in it. Like um, it wasn't worth it to me. And I didn't enjoy it anymore because I was feeling like, you know what, I'm getting better results in other areas in my business that are yielding a much higher return. So I'd rather just focus on that. So that's where like knowing your audience size and your audience interests, as well as what you like to do is really important. And we, we can talk about this too, but like Brie, for instance, you've shared with me, you don't really like coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I do. So for Brie doing a membership, like that is ideal because that's her preferred way to deliver information. Yeah, I, I absolutely love the group experience and watching the other people. I mean, obviously I'm in there helping too, but I don't want to be the only resource. I don't know everything you know, and I don't have everyone else's experiences. So I love to be able to watch other members be like, oh yeah, I tried that. And this is what happened. You know, I can't try every tool out there. I can't have every, you know, performing experience out there. I love that other people can, and I can shine the spotlight on those other people and have them connect and help. Yeah, absolutely. So 
Is there anything else in terms of like pros and cons of a membership that we need to talk about? One thing that's coming up for me is like, you've been doing this for six years. <laughs> that's a long time that you're every single month showing up. So talk to us about like the pros and cons. Yeah. I mean, the definite pros are you can scale it. Um, it, it, it takes a while to scale because of the price point, right? But as you scale it, you can bring other people on your team to help you out. If I had to do everything related to the membership right now, that's all I could do. But because I have my, um, my customer service person, you know, she sets up all the emails to send out to remind people to show up to the calls and um, my community, I have a community manager. So she handles the Facebook group and I just go in there every once in a while. She'll even do like some lives sometimes. Um, she shows up to the calls and helps me on the calls. Um, I have another coach in there now, Tara B, who does one call per month. So I don't have to show up on the last Friday of the month. She's handling it and she also helps me with the other calls. So you have the ability to scale in that way if you can grow your membership big enough that you can have enough money to pay other people to help you. So that's a, that's a really big pro because then you don't have to be involved in the day-to-day -day and the nitty gritty stuff that you might not like doing like the admin stuff or checking the Facebook group every day. Yeah, which kind of brings me to this thought that if you're looking for instant gratification and big bucks, maybe a membership isn't right. For you. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> it's, it's taken me years to really grow the membership to the place that I'm really feeling good about it now. I still I wish we had twice as many members. Yeah. But you know, I, I'm I'm happy with the way we're running it, the team that we have, and I feel like we are like poised and ready to really scale it now, where we could serve more people. But it, it, you know, it's taken a lot of different, you know, iterations and stuff. And luckily I was getting enough members that I could keep running it as I was kind of figuring it all out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if you're like at the start of your business and you're like, I need a cash injection or I need like a high ticket sale, this is this is not it. Not the idea. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about what is it, but this is not it. Um, and it's not to say you can't ever do a membership because of course, when you're growing and scaling your business, you'll introduce new offers. And as your audience grows, and this is might be a good fit down the line, but this is not quite it. If you're looking for that, like quick hit a million members at once, um, you know, that kind of thing, unless you already have in an established audience and an established business. Okay, so let's talk about a course, which is similar to a membership in some ways, but of course it's different. And most people know about courses because they might have taken one or, you know, they're seeing people promoted at least um, in, in the music industry or in topics beyond that. So I have courses, you have courses. Uh, there's definitely different types of courses that um, people can run and it's probably a step above a membership price wise in terms that you can definitely have a lower price course like a bundle i have like a bundle the wealthy musician bundle that i would guess i would describe as a course um it's like 50 bucks but you can also have courses that are 1500 bucks or sometimes even more expensive than that depending on what you're learning and what the program is so brie walk us through the basics of a course and I know you mentioned that like you started with a course, then you took it down, then you kind of did a new course. So what was that process like? And like, what made the difference there in launching the first one versus the second one? Yeah. So the first one, it really ended up being the core information that's in my membership now. Um, and it just, I, I think that the, the result of it was not immediate enough. That was the problem with my first course. And that's where, you know, a membership comes in because people are like on this growth journey, right? And that's really what the material for my first course, which was the musician's profit plan, that became the membership material because of the fact that people were on a longer journey. And I was frustrated because I couldn't see them have the transformation fast enough and they weren't staying as connected with me as I wanted. And that's when I realized the membership was right for me. Um, but once 
so there are definitely different kinds of courses. As she said, there's smaller ones. I have a ton of like $97 courses because I've created them as trainings within my membership over the years. Yeah. And they're very specific. You know, they're, they're like, get more done in less time. Like, you know, it's time management and productivity. Yeah. They're, you know, money, the money mindset one I just did or how to hire low cost assistants. Like those are very specific results. And that's where I think a course is different from a membership is you have a very specific result that you're getting out of it. Um, it may take you several months to get that result if it's a longer course. And so, you know, there's kind of like mini courses, the way I call them, $97 and less, yeah. maybe even $197 and less, which I have a couple of those. And then there's kind of your flagship course. Yeah. which is your main course, which for me is the Rock Your Next Release program. It's $497 right. is the price. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a bigger course, you know? It's taking someone through their entire release process for an album or an EP. So they're in this course for months. And yeah. um, so as far as like the support that you offer with courses, Many courses, I say that you don't need to offer any support. Like yeah. you don't have time to be offering a monthly call for a $97 course. And let me just say this. <laughs> I, and this is what's interesting, like, you know, that you have so many great courses and memberships. And I, I have courses too. I have the Wealthy Musician Bundle, From Stress to Success, and the Audience Builder Bundle. So one thing I'll throw in real quick is that I think bundles also are technically courses. And those can be great too if you've like accumulated a lot of trainings or, you know, performances or something like that. And you can sell it as a bundle. And it's cohesive. Like it's still going to be on a topic or it's still going to be cohesive. But that way, sometimes that works as like a lower priced option for people. But the key there is, again, you want to get results. I always struggled though, because you want the course in some instances or in most instances to be somewhat lower barrier to entry, probably lower than a one-on-one, -on -one, especially if you're doing one-on-one. -on -one. And I would always be like, oh, but I want to help them. I want to have the Facebook group or the Slack and I want to be hands-on and I want to guide them through it. And sometimes not only was it just not worth it for me, but it also just didn't make sense like given the price point or people didn't want that and so i always as like as a coach have to hold myself back from like almost over delivering in a course which is kind of funny to say because it's like how could you over deliver but like you don't need to have your hands in everything and the course is usually for people who don't want to have their hands in everything so people can just buy the course do it themselves and get the results yeah. I mean, that's why I have the membership because I do want my hands and stuff. And that like satisfies that part of me, but yet yeah. I can still have these <laughs> courses that I sell, um, is as one-offs and know that I'm getting somebody a result Yeah, and it, and it, and it feels good, you know? And then usually those people come back to me for more stuff or they join the membership or they join the bigger course, you know? Yeah. So let's talk about framework because framework is one thing that you really need to have in order to host a course or create a course, even with bundles like I was talking about. So for instance, I have the audience builder bundle, even though that's a bundle where I've compiled videos, like I pulled some from the mastermind, I had some new trainings come in, I recorded some on my own. There's still a framework in there that I take people through, even though I've bundled the videos together from other places or other trainings. So in order to get results, talk to us about like how to create a framework or like what we what we should do if we don't have a framework <laughs> and and how to know if we're ready to actually put something put information into a course that's going to get people results yeah i mean one thing is that you you notice the questions that you're answering all the time you notice that you're telling people kind of the same you know similar things you're taking them through a certain journey step by step of how you, they can get the transformation, the result that you want to give them. And you take note of that and you just start putting that all down, like spewing it all onto the page. That's how I figured out my framework for Rock Your Next Release. I was like, okay, if I were releasing, you know, what would I do first? What would I do next? Blah, blah, blah. What am I, you know, what's missing? And I would just kind of either use like sticky notes or like put it on a, a Google doc and you can, paste and, you know, copy and paste and move things around and um, just really brain dump and figure out what people would need to know to get that result. 
And generally you get this from having either done it yourself or having gotten this result for someone else. So if you, if you're not the person that got the result, but you've been able to get it for other people by show, taking them through a step-by-step -step framework that maybe you didn't really ever write down as a framework or realize it was a framework. But as you started thinking about it, you started seeing all the commonalities of how you were helping people one-on-one -on -one or how you did it yourself. You're kind of like, oh, how did I get here? And then you start realizing, oh, I did this. And then I did this. And when you put it into an organized fashion, that's a framework. And what's really helpful is you can kind of name that framework. Like, you know, mine is the rock your next release framework. So people are kind of like, oh, they associate you with that framework. And that really gives a lot of, uh, you know, credence to what you do in your course, because you can say, I've got this framework. You know, it's kind of like when somebody authors a book that gives them more cred, right? It's kind of the same way with having a framework. Yeah. Now, something that uh, we kind of touched on a membership, but Membership's going to give you like recurring income because each month people are paying, unless they pay in full, but like most likely people are going to be paying each month. With a course, it's a little bit different. So let's talk about how we can kind of like grow and scale that pros and cons. Because on the one time, on the one hand, like it's easy for you because you can just sell it and be done. But what do we need in terms of audience size and what do we need to consider in terms of like how the income looks coming into us when we're when we're considering launching a course? Yeah, so I mean, you can have a pay in full and a payment plan if you want. And depending on your price, you can have the payment plan be longer depending on how long it takes people to go through your course. So, you know, with my course at first, I launched it with a 497 pay in full and $97 every month for six months. And I just started to realize that that was kind of too long of a time period for them. Although it was nice to get that $97 a month for six months, yeah, it just, it didn't quite work with the way that they were thinking. And by the time they got further down the line, they had a lot other, you know, more expenses in relation to their release. And it was just uh, it started to become more of a burden in their mind, I think. So I decided to switch it to a three pay. So I was getting 179 for three months. So it allows overlap. So if I say I was only going to launch like once every three months, that would allow me to still have recurring income every single month if people bought on the payment plan. Right. And I would still have this, you know, coming in, even if I wasn't launching every single month. Yeah. And, uh, it's funny because I did a sa the same thing where when I did From Stress to Success the first couple times, um, I introduced a six month option to like make it more doable for people. But then you you open the door sometimes with that with like people falling off or people asking for refunds or changing their credit card information the longer you have it. And just like Bree said, I would sometimes have people who chose that option and then say, hey, can I just pay off the balance? Like, I don't want this hanging over my head for three more months. Like, I just want to be done with it. <laughs> so there are options. And um, Brie and I will talk more about that kind of stuff in the upcoming weeks. Remember that you don't have to, like, sell your left shoe and lower the price to zero in order to get someone to join your program. We don't want that. We want our leads to be actually qualified and interested in what we're launching, not having to convince them to join. So that's really important as you're sort of like deciding which option's best for me and which option is my audience going to most gravitate to or how do they react when I launch these things or present these offers so far? Because um, I find that to be extremely important in the process of selling. Yes. And I didn't even finish answering your question about audience. So I wanted to get into that with courses. Yes. I mean, you still, it's still important to have an audience, like having an engaged group of people online. Uh, another option is if you've got people, if you're teaching people one-on-one -on -one and maybe you're full, like you're at a wait list status and you can't teach everybody or, or you just want to stop trading time for money because you're teaching people kind of a similar framework, like I said, why not have them all go through a course instead? There's also sometimes people that want to work with you one-on-one, -on -one, but they can't afford it because generally, as we said, one-on-one -on -one is more expensive. And so they would be a perfect group of people to create a course for. But you need to like 
see, oh, do I have these? Do I have people coming to me saying, I want to learn from you, but I can't afford it? Or are you at waitlist status? Or do you have people online that are coming to you saying, wow, I love what you're doing. I'd love to learn from you. And the other great thing about a course too, is because it is a very specific outcome for a specific group of people, right? Like for me, no one's going to want to take rock your next release if they're not releasing music. Like it doesn't yeah. apply to them. So yeah. it's very clear that like I say, if you're releasing music in the next 18 months, this is for you. Right. you know, otherwise it is not for you. So it's great to know who it's not for. So you can focus on the people that it's for. And then you know where to find them. Well, where would I yeah. find people that are released wanting to release music? Well, they probably like things like CD Baby or TuneCore. They probably, um, you know, are asking a lot of questions about how to get on Spotify playlists and stuff like yeah. that. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's easier ways to find that audience if you have a very specific outcome for your course. So different than a membership, like a membership, you can just have a big audience that might be at slightly different places and you're going to create trainings that cater to everyone right and you're going to be able to answer everyone's questions a course is something where like not only do you need to have an audience large enough that they're going to opt into something but you also have to have a lar audience large enough that's interested in the specific topic that you're going to be teaching on because like let's say brie had a bunch of people on her list but they all wanted to tour and none of them were releasing music or cared about releasing music if she launched this course she could have a huge list but if none of them care about that topic it's gonna flop because it's not ultimately what her audience wants and needs um which of course is why market research is so important yes. <laughs> but but that i think is like a distinct difference because your ideal audiences for each offer are going to be different and your course audience is going to be much more specific yeah yeah so let's see is there anything we haven't talked about with courses yet i'm trying to think that if there's anything we didn't cover I don't think so. I think the only thing that's coming up for me is sort of like bleeding into the group program where sometimes you can almost have a course that runs as a group program or vice versa, depending on how you want to describe it, where you have a framework that you take people through um, and you also coach them through it. So, yeah, I mean, I think that with with courses like one thing that we can use to jump off to the group programs is you can choose to be as involved as you want with courses. As we talked about, like maybe the lower price courses, you, you just want it to be passive. Yeah. Whereas the flagship course, you know, I have one meeting with my students a month. I decided that's something I could do. I thought it would be helpful to them, but um, group programs are a little bit more handholding, right? right. So I, I work as a coach in a group program, but I don't run a group program. So I'd love to hear from you, um, you know, what do you see that is different from a group program from a course? Yeah, so I have run several different group programs and some, like when I first started out, it was almost just like one-on-one -on -one made group. So like I had several clients who were sort of like, they had been one-on-one -on -one clients or they were new, it was about half and half and, they were like, you know, I'm looking, they're basically looking for something that was a little bit lower cost than my one-on-one. -on -one, and I wanted something for me that would allow me to have a little bit more time in my day and be able to work with people in a group. Because that's the great part about group is that basically you're not trading time for money as much like you would be in a one-on-one -on -one circumstance. So the first time I ran a group program, it literally was just like, it's group coaching. Like you show up every week or however often we had the calls. We had an hour and a half call and we just round tabled it up. So basically we'd have the group, you know, somebody would go first. They'd say, I need support with this this week. And we'd talk it out. And so everyone else who's on the call in the group can ask their question and get coached. And they can also learn from the other people who are in the group and who are there, um, who are maybe asking questions they didn't think to ask or are working on something that's not what they're working on right now, but will be helpful for them to know down the line and stuff like that. So all the people in that group were working on similar, but slightly different, you know, projects and businesses because not everyone's gonna be identical based on what they're going through. I've also run programs um, like the Mastermind. And I'll say this actually first off, when I first started From Stress to Success, which is now like a totally self-paced course, I, the first couple times I did it, I did like Facebook group bonus with lives and stuff like that. And that's not really group coaching. 
because especially if you're doing lives, it's a little bit more hands off. You're not necessarily coaching. That's where maybe the line gets blurry, but you can do what's more group coaching and course, um, similar to what I did with the mastermind or like we're going to be doing without to launch. And like I did without to launch. So here's a couple different examples. So without to launch, um, which I launched for the first time in January, 21, it was basically the framework of launching. You go through the course, we've got the modules, we've, we're dripping the videos, you're watching the step-by-step -step of how to create your offer and how to launch. And there's the group coaching component. So each week we would have a call and we had a Slack channel so that everyone could ask their questions and get support uh, during the process. So I would drop the videos on Monday. So everyone had the time to watch the teaching material. And then there would be a coaching part of it. Like I said, on the calls and via Slack. So it's sort of like a combination of teaching and coaching where a course is more just teaching and, um, one-on-one -on -one might be more so focused on coaching because you're not necessarily showing up to each one-on-one -on -one call teaching information. Um, so that's one example that's, again, more of like a group course hybrid uh, that I would really just refer to as a group program. And then with the mastermind, it was even different than that because the mastermind was actually a group and one-on-one -on -one hybrid. So we mm -hmm. can talk about that a little bit later. Um, and there were video modules. There was a video vault, but that was less there was some framework there, but it wasn't necessarily like you're going to get from point A to point B, like out to launch was like by the end of out to launch, you'll have launched. The mastermind was more of just like supplemental supportive materials and guest trainings based on where everyone in that program was at. And of course, the mastermind is a really intimate program. So that's maxed out at like 10 people. So that's like a very broad overview of a couple different examples of what a group program can look like. And to show you that you have some flexibility in there and they you can see that, you know, we're getting the weeds where some of these offers can be combined with each other, but you have the opportunity to figure out what works for you based on like what it is that you're seeking to do and what's going to work for your clients. Yeah. I think one signifier of a group program is it does tend to be a higher price than either a course or a membership. So I work as a coach in what I would call a group program and it is a much higher price point because everyone gets like personalized help on anything at any time. So they don't get like one-on-one -on -one calls, but we have calls where people's specific questions are answered. They're submitted in advance. They're talked through like we are right now um, in a one-on-one -on -one setting, but like there's multiple people per call. Also our Facebook group is like full of coaches. So coaches inside of there are helping them with their particular problem and work through things. So I think that, and obviously if you're an individual, you don't have to have that, you know, group of coaches that are running, you know, you could eventually be at that point, but yeah. if you're the only one running it, um, helping people kind of with their specific problems um, in within a group setting. So it's, it's kind it is very much like a, one-on-one -on -one meets framework, <clears throat> meets membership. It's kind of almost like a culmination of all of them. And then in any like combination that you wanted, but calling it a group program, I think to me signifies a lot more high touch. Yes, yes. Probably a lot more high price. Yes, and that's the key is like, most likely your price point is gonna be determined by the touch points that they get from you. A course that they just buy, they don't get access to you. They're not getting coached by you. So that might be lower price. A membership, maybe it's once a week or once a month that you're meeting with them. Okay, so that's a level above. A group program is gonna be another level above where you've probably got weekly or maybe even multiple times a week calls and you've got like Slack access or Facebook group where you can ask questions and continue that support. And then a one-on-one -on -one would obviously be like, you get one-on-one -on -one very, very specific support. So. Think of it as like, that's the, the ladder of closeness to you, of touch points that they get to you, and that'll also determine your price. And I agree that a group coaching program is something that um, it allows you to scale up your prices from like a membership, but scale down your prices from a one-on-one, -on -one, which can make it 
more approachable for clients in that sense because they're still able to get support from you but without a super high one-on-one -on -one price and in for you you can ultimately make more by doing that even though the price is lower because if you're teaching everyone on a group if you have five people in a group and one hour call per week that's one hour of coaching versus five hours of coaching per week if they were all one-on-one -on -one clients so with four hours back in your day what can you do how can you monetize that how can you grow your business it allows you to continue to grow and scale from there and obviously like growing the numbers of the program is one thing but also like getting time back in your day to work on money making activities plan your launch plan your social media that's all really important stuff too yeah so i think you know who is who is a group program good for what kind of um coach or teacher I think it's definitely has to be someone that enjoys working with people. Yeah. You know, I mean, I love working with people, but for whatever reason, I don't like working one on one, um, partly because of the trading time for money thing. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear when we get into the one on one, like why Katie loves that. I just don't tend to love that, but I love working in groups and it's just kind of a little bit of a different dynamic. There's yeah. also it's like you're not the only one that's responsible for their results. Everybody in the group is cheering them on. Um, there's also just like this, I feel like this group momentum that happens as they see other people having wins. And when other people ask questions that maybe they're afraid to ask, they're, they're embarrassed that they don't know the answer. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think that's, you have to be a person that wants to work with people but I do think there's a different vibe in working in a group versus working one-on-one. -on -one. There is. And a lot of that comes with the group itself. Like I, when I ran the last round of the mastermind, um, I had a lot of people join who had work with, worked with me before, who either came directly from being one-on-one -on -one clients or who had been clients in the past and came back as well as some new people. But a lot of people had already worked with me in a one-on-one -on -one setting. And then when we made it a group, by the end of the group, it was no longer just like, oh, this was my client, that was my client. It was like, this is the group. Mm -hmm. Like we in the trainings or in the group calls when people would ask questions, everyone would be in the chat, hyping them up, giving them ideas, sharing their support. Like it was, um, we used to call ourselves witches because like we'd make all like witchy jokes and stuff like that. Like it was very much like the group became its own identity. And in a sense, the program did too, because you have that chemistry there. And that's why one of the cons almost of group coaching is like, you have to be really particular with the clients that you choose to work mm, with. Because yeah. if you, if your program, like the mastermind was six months, um, out to launch is four months. So if you're working with people for six months or you know even longer than that and you have like a you know bad egg or you have someone who's just like not vibing with the group or you choose people who just aren't ideal clients but you let them in anyway because you're feeling desperate then you end up stuck with people who just like aren't a good fit for long periods of time and you can also go, also kind of risk that group dynamic be becoming lower or just not as good uh, if you're not really particular with the people that you let in yeah i mean in, in in the group program that i work in like we do not allow toxic people if if we see like even one sign of them being toxic we give them a warning and at, at some point we just say no like you're not allowed to show up for the calls you're not allowed to come to mask you know into the yeah. group and because it's it's not good for the whole group and it will mess up the entire vibe so that is very very important and you also would you say in a group program that do people need to generally be in a similar place or is it okay that they're like beginner and further along, you know, kind of like in a membership? I think it depends. Like for something like out to launch, obviously the ideal client there is going to be way more specific because it's like you are coming in knowing that you're going to launch an offer like one of the things we're talking about today, right? So some people might have a business already established. Some people might be brand new. That doesn't matter so much, but you want to make sure everyone's in the same place where they know they're working towards this specific goal. For a mastermind, for instance, I think you have more flexibility there. Some masterminds, like some business masterminds will say, this is for people making, you know, this range of income. And then the high level is for this range of income. 
I don't particularly do that with mine. Um, I just haven't felt the need to yet. Um, but I think that I make sure I'm basically just vetting people. With my mastermind in particular, I don't like to put too many specifics on it because I, the ideal client for that is basically just, again, to use the phrase, multifaceted music entrepreneur. So a lot of people who were in the mastermind last time were musicians and coaches or and teachers and they had multiple streams of income and you know I had one client who was a musician and she had a fashion line another client who was a musician and she started teaching uh songwriters how to write and record their music so like the goal of the mastermind is like you're a multifaceted entrepreneur how do we balance all of these things how do we make sure we're growing every part of your career etc so people are going to be having different projects but in that sense they're in the same wavelength they're all music entrepreneurs doing multiple things. Most of them were full-time or at least trying to go full-time. So those were the qualifications, but it wasn't like deal breakers or like they all had to be musicians and coaches or they all had to be coaches or anything like that. Yeah. I think one thing that can help when you're vetting people for a group program is like, at least try to have them have a certain core of similar knowledge, because what you don't want is someone who's a total beginner that doesn't understand the terms that everyone is using, you know, what's a, what's an opt-in what's, you know, like just like common stuff. And they're just, for example, say somebody has never done business online before, and then they jump into a group program with a bunch of people that, you know, know how to create a landing page and know how to, you know, and so either they're going to be totally lost or like the people that are further ahead might be a little annoyed that you're having to ask like very basic questions. So that's one thing to think about, I think in a group program to at least try to have people that are kind of on, like you said, the, the same wavelength, they don't have to be doing the same projects, but they at least need to have kind of a similar base of knowledge. So nobody feels like they're either totally lost or like, so bored by the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And sometimes you can offer people like bonuses. Like if someone's like, oh, you're a perfect fit, but you're just struggling with this one thing or you're just lacking in this one area. Here, I'm going to give you complimentary access to my course so you can do this as pre-work and then you'll be all set to go, right? So you yeah. can do that. But yeah, if somebody if somebody's like, you need to go through this program first or you're just simply not ready, you need to be able to make the call as the coach so you're not welcoming someone to into a program that they're not a good fit for like point blank <laughs> because it's not going to be good for either of you if that happens yeah for sure okay so let's talk about one-on-one -on -one, because i know that you've done a lot of one-on-one -on -one. this is that's how you started i believe mm -hmm. um so why do you love one-on-one -on -one? and you know who do you think is the best fit for doing one-on-one -on -one? It's funny because I really just want to say, I feel like I love one-on-one -on -one because I'm a control freak, but I <laughs> no, I don't think so because I'm a control freak and I don't. So, <laughs> okay. True, true. So I started with one-on-one -on -one and I think that one-on-one -on -one is great both to start and to scale your business. When you're getting started, you heard Brie and I talk about frameworks and stuff like that, that you might use for a course or group coaching program. Well, a one-on-one -on -one is a great way to test the waters like no one's gonna want to join a course where you're just like i just made up this framework for the first time and no one's ever used it before it's never been tested i have no testimonials but buy my course give it a try nobody's gonna want to do that so when you work one-on-one -on -one with people that's where you can start to try out the framework through coaching and start to see like what's working what doesn't what did we do that got results etc but and so when you're getting started, I think one-on-one -on -one is a great place to start because not only does it bring in higher income without you having to have as big of an audience, because, you know, if you're bringing on five clients to make the same amount of money that you would to bring on like 50 clients in a membership or a course, that's a big difference. You don't need as big of an audience to get started with one-on-one. -on -one. You just need a few people who are good fits. Um, but when it also comes to scaling your business, one-on-one -on -one is great because then it becomes your highest ticket offer. Now you've got courses or a membership or a group program or a couple different offers that build upon each other. Well, one-on-one -on -one is going to be for those people who want VIP access to you, all of your product suite, everything you have to offer, and they basically want your hands in their business. So that's how I look at one-on-one -on -one right now as a business coach. It's like, 
I have my hands in my clients' businesses and we're doing all of the strategy planning together. You know, they're getting my feedback on everything, like, you know, working through mindset blocks because that's what I coach on. Let's say you're a music teacher or you're teaching on marketing. It would be the same thing, but just in that specific area, right? So essentially it's the most support that you could ever give someone based on what you're willing to give. Um, and because of that, it's also gonna be the highest price point that you would charge in your offer suite, uh, which is a win-win. Um, but that also makes the barrier of entry for people joining sometimes a little bit higher because not everyone's gonna be able to afford the higher one-on-one -on -one prices. Yeah, and what I think is great about one-on-one -on -one is it has built-in accountability so you know that your people are either going to get results or they're going to bail because they're not doing the work. Yeah. And that true. helps you get a lot of really great testimonials. Yes. Yes. That's such a good point. Mm -hmm. And, um, one thing I would say as well is like, I think to answer your question of why I love it so much, I really like it because it allows me to deepen my relationship with the person I'm working with. So it's not so much like, oh, and there's nothing bad about this, but I'm just gonna use an example. Like with a membership, if you have a really, really big membership and you know, you're know you having calls with people once a month, let's say, you're maybe not as able to like know as much or go as deep in people's businesses because you simply don't have the time to do so. Like you just don't. But with one-on-one, -on -one, especially with a longer program or a continued relationship, you're able to really get to know someone's program, someone's business, someone's whatever it is you're working mm -hmm. on. And you can just do more, more impact, more work, get more specific, etc. And that's why I like it a lot. And I think coming from someone who is a coach in the music industry and working with a lot of other people other coaches that I've hired to help me, a lot of them don't know the music industry because like, when I was getting started, there were there were no other music industry coaches teaching business um, like we are now. <laughs> <laughs> We've got your back, <laughs> but there weren't. So I would go to like fitness coaches or wellness coaches or business general coaches who t generally taught fitness stuff. You know what I mean? Like they didn't quite get it. And so it would take them time to warm up to my business and really get to know like my niche, my industry. And obviously if you're working with someone who's already in that, you don't have to necessarily think about that. But even still having the time with one-on-one -on -one gives people a way to just like get a full picture of you and your business and therefore coach you in the best way possible. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, in a membership, I, I'm not able to keep up with everybody as much as I would want to, for sure. And sometimes I have to like read my own newsletter to see the wins of everybody so I can keep up with what everybody's doing. Cause I want to know, you know, but I also don't want to, which is one of the cons of one-on-one -on -one, trade my time for money by having one-on-one -on -one clients, because yeah. I would much rather leverage my time to do other things where like create more courses or, you know, do more things for my members or like do what I'm doing right now with Katie, you know, create a quiz for you guys. So I couldn't do that if I was spending all my time doing one-on-one -on -one. and I also with one-on-one, -on -one, which was what was hard for me is I had a hard time looking at my calendar and seeing that a lot of my time was filled up that like didn't sit well with me. I like seeing yeah. like an open landscape. So that for me is one major reason why I don't do one-on-one, -on -one. but um, it's, you know, you can, especially for someone starting out, see like, I don't need to do it because I have a bigger audience yeah. and I can run a membership and I can have courses. But if you're starting out, those other things take a lot longer to build your audience to the point yep. where you can do that. So yep. what's great is there's like literally no barrier to entry other than, you know what you want to teach and you might know some people that want to learn from you. Yeah. And you don't have to have, here's the step-by-step -step, or here's the, this, you can just have more of a general overview of like who you are, how you're going to help them. Um, which makes it easier to market, makes it easier to launch. It's just, it's, it's easier. It's easier to start with. That being said, what's interesting is like when it comes to the scaling part, like if you are at the scaling point of your business where you're building your offers, that's where I feel like one-on-one -on -one becomes interesting because if Brie were to, to reintroduce one-on-one -on -one or introduce one-on-one -on -one 
she'd be charging top dollar because now it's like, I'm only taking on one or two one-on-one -on -one clients and my time is so valuable that in order to do this, I have to be paid my worth. And the people who join that, those are going to be the people who are like, I'm all in. I just want to be in Bree's energy. I just want to be in her space. I just want to like have her brain in my business. And so those are the people who are like, they're, they're there almost more just for you as opposed to being there because it's like, oh, I want to do this thing. So I'm going to take this course that'll get me this result. It's more like, I see like the vision of what Brie created in her business and I desperately want that. And I just know that having like her inside of my business is going to help me get there. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, the times that I've paid for super high touch programs and one-on-one -on -one are when I saw somebody that had the result that I wanted, like the yep. exact result. And exactly. that's when it was worth it to me to do that. You know, someone had built the exact kind of membership that I wanted to create. That's when I'm worth that's when it's worth it to me to pay the higher prices for one-on-one -on -one because I know that they can get me the result I want. And most likely you also really like that person and like the way they operate and stuff like that. And that makes a big difference when it comes to one-on-one -on -one as well, because like when you are working so closely with someone, you want to get along with them. You want to not think the same as in you're just validating each other and whatnot, but you want to be able to really like have similar values and, um, basically get along <laughs> and most likely the people who are hiring you, they're going to like look up to you. They're going to admire you. They're going to know that they're a good fit to work with you as they go through the process to apply and whatnot. Yeah. And the benefit of one-on-one -on -one is that we all have blind spots in our business. I have blind spots. That is why I have mentors. You know, yeah. we can't always see everything from every angle in our own business. We get like sometimes like major tunnel vision and we miss out on things that could be fixed so easily, but we are missing it. So that's yeah. really where one-on-one -on -one can be super helpful for people that utilize it. Yep. I, yeah, I totally agree. So this has been very thorough, I yes. think, for everyone who's gone to this point. Um, hopefully you've already taken the quiz, katiezacardia.com slash quiz or profitablemusician.com slash quiz. Go take the quiz. Let us know on Instagram which, ones, which one you got and which offer you're thinking about introducing uh, in your business. But before we wrap up, Brie, is there anything else that we didn't cover on these four offers that people can consider um, adding as a stream of revenue? Oh my gosh. I think we covered so much. I know. <laughs> I'm so like, much. I, I just covered would, everything. <laughs> I would just say that even if you heard all of that and you're like, like, who am I to be doing this? I am telling you that you can do this. You have knowledge and experience that's going to be valuable to somebody else. And if you've never done this before, you can test it out with one-on-one. -on -one. Like it, yeah. you can see if, the, if you've got something that can really become a course. If you're somebody that's already teaching and you've been teaching for years, but you haven't jumped into the online space and created a course or a membership, I highly recommend that you look into that because that's going to be a way that you can scale what you're already doing and get back some of your time. I have yeah. friends who, you know, used to teach voice lessons back to back solid. They were completely booked out. They had a wait list and they introduced it, uh, introduced a membership. And now they've got so much of their time back that they're almost like, I, I am not used to having this much time. I can actually <laughs> have hobbies again. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's something I'll mention too, because I've had people recently reach out to me and say like, I'm trying to scale my business. I feel like I need to hire on coaches under or teachers underneath me, uh, blah, blah, blah. And that can be a solution. Like you can definitely scale your business by like hiring on coaches or teachers that are below you that you sort of like take cut of and everything, but you're still going to be trading time for hours. You're still going to be doing that. So I want, uh, if that's you, definitely use this episode as brain fuel to figure out how can I think of other ways to scale and what might be a good fit for me um, to scale that maybe isn't hiring more people, which can also kind of seem risky, but instead allows me to like get more time back and grow my client base in a way that, that works for me and for my business model and my interests. 
Yeah, and take the quiz because we really tried to look at all the angles and ask you questions from all the angles that you may not have thought of to help you figure out which would be the best fit for you. Absolutely. Now, the next steps in the process, once you've decided what you're going to do, is to launch that offer. So Brie and I are going to have a lot more content coming out around just that in the next few months. So definitely make sure that you're following the Out to Be podcast and me on Instagram. And you can also subscribe to my email list, uh, but you'll be able to do that if you take the quiz. And Brie, where can we keep up with you? Definitely go to the Profitable Musician, sorry, ProfitableMusician.com femusician.com for the female entrepreneur musician podcast. We'll be having episodes around this as well on those shows. And also follow me on Instagram at profitable musician LLC. I'm going to be talking about some of this stuff on my IGTVs and things coming up. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Like I said, we want you to go take the quiz, screenshot your results, and then share them on your Instagram stories and tag us so that we can see what you got and support you as you move forward to launch that offer into the world. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at RondiFay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.